In our everyday life as human resource professionals, we encounter large volumes of data that will normally require us to extract some information from them. This video highlights some of the basic Excel functions that are aimed at making this process simpler and exciting. Welcome to Microsoft Excel Made Easy. On our screen here are the highlights of some of the things we'll be dealing with. The first Excel feature as a HR that you must know is the Excel sum function and sum if function. So how do you use the sum function? It's very popular among us. So here we have a table already. So all the data set that we'll be using today has been pre-formatted as a table because that's the first thing you must make sure that you do to your set of data to work efficiently. Now you go ahead to calculate the total company salary. So you use the sum function, you hit equal to sum, and you call up the sum function, and you now select the range. So the range is the whole of this column salary. So notice how I'm going to select it here. Hit control shift and your down arrow key, and Excel will quickly select it for you. Close up your bracket and hit enter. Now the total salary is what? This. $469,157. So it's actually in general. So change it to what currency and you should see it as that. Now you want to calculate the total sum of salary per department. So you use the sum if function. So there's a criteria in this case. How do you do that? You hit what equal to sum if. All right. So sum if then the range now is what range is all these departments that is listed here is in the department range so i select the first cell Control shift down key will select the whole set of data under that particular column for me i hit what comma then what is the criteria the criteria in this case is what human resource that is g6 and in this case then hit comma then what is the sum range the sum range is the range of cells under the salary column so I hit down and I hit what? Enter. So this shows what? $123,625. So I'm going to format this as currency. Is that right? Then I'm going to copy from use format printer to format the remaining of this as what? Currency. How about that? So from here now, I can easily replicate this my formula. So having gotten the first one, you can go ahead to replicate your formula down to get the others. So the next Microsoft Excel function that we'll be looking at is the today function and the date div function. Now you have a table here and you have today's date and the age of that particular staff. How do you find today's date? So how to find today's date is to use the Excel function today. It's as simple as typing today, then Opening your bracket and closing, then hitting what? Enter. Now, because your table has been preformatted, Excel will smartly fill up all this for you. Is that not super awesome? Now, to calculate the age of the particular staff, use the date diff function. So, the date diff function is called up using what? The date diff. All right, make sure it's spelled correctly then open bracket now you specify the start date which is the date of birth comma and you specify the today's date or the end date which is today's date comma then you specify the result that you want your date to return which is what the number of years so this result can actually be number of months also can be number of days so once you've done that so for year, you type in Y. For months, you type in M. For days, you type in what? D. So once you've done that, you close it up and it calculates the dates of each staff in that particular table. How about that? Now, notice what is happening here. This is the syntax. And it says what? The start date and have the what? End date. Then have the year. So the syntax for this formula can be stated in the following variations. Dated if start date, end date, then Y. So if you type in Y, it means this will return the number of complete years between two dates, such as 
when calculating the age of an individual. So if it is such that you have M, it will return the number of complete months between two dates. So if it is such that you have D, it will return the number of days between two days. All right. So supposing we change this eventually to M, you notice that every two will change towards months. So supposing we'll change this to maybe day. All right. Everything will change to days. How about that? So, but I do that will leave it as what y to see the total number of days for each of these staff. Now, the next ultimate HR function that you must know as a HR personnel is the count function. So here we have number of staff total for the company. So what you can do here is to just count the number of people in this company using the count function. Right, so it's not ideal or efficient to come and start counting one, two, and all that. So you use the function to do that. Now you select this and use your control shift down arrow key to select everything that is there, and you can now go ahead to just close it up. It's very simple. But count if equal to count if, then you select the particular function that corresponds to what you need. Then the range is go to the department, control shift, down arrow key, and it will select that whole range for you. Then you hit what comma. Then the criteria is what human resource. Then you close up that and you can hit what enter. And it tells you that what the total number of staff in human resource department is what four. Is that okay? Now, you can also go ahead to use the count ifs function if there's another criteria, maybe the age. Is that right? So, supposing we want to use the count ifs function. So, to use the count ifs function, you hit what equal to count ifs. So, for count ifs, there is more than one criteria involved. So, the criteria range one is the column under what department. So select this first guy, control shift, down arrow key. So sometimes if you can type table seven, I try to tell you that the name of this table is table seven, then put this uh, open and the name of the particular header, then close it up, then to make reference to it instead of uh, going through this method. So whichever one works for you is fine. So after you've selected the criteria range one, comma, then the criteria is what? Human resource is okay. Then comma, then the criteria range two in this case is what the column for what age because the criteria is what greater than 30. So the column for age is select this first guy, control shift down arrow key, and you should have that. Then my criteria two is what this greater than what 30. So I can now go ahead to close up this and I hit what enter. So this tells me that though we have four people in human resource but we have only three people that their age is greater than 30 that is in human resource is that not super awesome so you can go ahead to use the same criteria to find out for the other people so you can go ahead to replicate and using the same criteria and you should see what it gives you now the next excel function that we'll be looking at is the count blanks and the count all. How about that? Is that right? So equal to the count blank, right? So it's actually going to count the cells that does not have data in it. So control shift down arrow key, okay? Down arrow key until it selects everything. Then you just close it up because it's only one print that you're looking for. And it says that six cells actually have blanks. Is that right? So to find the cells that does not have blanks, so use the count all function equal to count all or count a. Is that right? Then you select the value. So the value is this range. So there is value two and all that. But since we already have it in range, you close it up and hit enter. So the total number of blanks is six, and the total number of cells that contains data is 15 so 15 plus 6 is 21 which is the 21 that we have here is that okay now we can now go ahead to find the maximum and the minimum age it's very simple this one is very simple for you to implement so equal to max right so max and you can now select this range of cells 
and you can just close up and hit what enter to bring the maximum age for you then the minimum age equal to mean select the range of cells and hit enter and to select bring back the result for you accordingly close up and hit enter so the minimum age is 21. so the next set of functions that you must know as a hr professional are actually text functions the upper lower and the proper case text functions so how do you apply these text functions so for the upper you hit what equal to upper all right then you select it then you select the text so this is the text in this case and you close it up all right then hit what enter and it will fill that up for you as the case may be just so 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 fast is that right so that's one thing we're talking with the table so the next one is what lower once you select lower and you can select the first that and you close it up and to fill that up for you so it changes everything to lower case so the next one is proper so proper actually capitalizes the first letter in each word is that okay so that is what you call maybe sentence case in microsoft word so select the first that close it up and to do all that for you is that not super easy all these are super super easy excel functions that you can use to speed up workflow in microsoft excel but if you don't know how to use it you'll just be burning a whole lot of man hour and all that so this next excel function is trim and it will help you as a hr to close up any unwanted gaps or random spaces that you find in your database look at this the whole lot of spaces look at this a whole lot of spaces so how do you use the trim function is as fast as calling the trim function trim then select the text and you close it up hit enter and to make everything look so so neat is it not super easy is it not super fast so the next microsoft excel function that we're looking at is the concatenate function excel concatenate or concat function so both concatenate and concat have the same logic to generate a result but the concat function only works in excel 2019 and later versions so the version that we're actually using is 2016 so definitely will not have concat present so the excel concatenation function works such that you hit what equal to concatenate who am, who am i typing so you have concatenate so it asks you for the text one so let's use this as our text one comma then you can now go ahead to put what text two all right so you close it up but i just want to show you something before we eventually end this so it shows this all right so it shows this for us what it's trying to do is to combine this employee name with what their department now what you notice is that this set of data does not actually make sense concatenate means what joining together but we need to actually add like a space between the employee name and the department so how do we do that notice where you have the comma before the text two what you just need to do is to include a speech mark hit your spacebar and close up the speech mark so the spacebar that i hit is actually telling microsoft excel that i'm introducing a string and it actually recognizes it as text too so after everything i hit what comma then my department column will now be my text tree so after everything i can now hit what enter and it actually implement that for all my cells is okay now i can still go ahead to include employee name is in this department so i can come here and type in is in okay so it will put this for me but you notice what is happening here again so i can add a space here and hit enter and it becomes that so you can there are a whole lot of things that you can try do on this so let's try and add another string at the end of this so that to be human resource comma then department okay the part so you are 
invariably trying to make a statement using Excel functions. So it's in human resource department. How about that? Is that right? So these are actually statements for all this data, but you are actually using Excel to achieve that. The next Microsoft Excel function that we'll be looking at that you must know as a human resource personnel is the VLOOKUP function. So this function is actually very popular and it's also easy to implement. How do you do that? So equal to VLOOKUP, we've actually made video on VLOOKUP. You can check it up on your screen now. So the lookup value is this comma. Then my table array is the whole of this table. So I'm just going to select this. Then uh, control shift down arrow key will select everything for me, comma, then the column index number. So in this table, employee name is in column one, department is in column two. So actually what we want to look up is our department, which is what column two. So you select what two, then comma, then the range lookup is mostly exact match because we want to find the exact match of what you are looking for. So you hit enter. So what this is trying to tell us is that what Charles McCrossing is in the marketing department. So in the video that we made on VLOOKUP, we actually made it in such a way that you can have a drop down here using data validation so that once you select some other names, the department changes accordingly. How about that? So go ahead to watch the video if you have not done so. So the next Excel function that we'll be looking at is the index match. So this formula is the combination of two functions, the index and the match function index returns the value of a cell in a table based on the column and row number y match returns the position of a cell in a row or column so here we are going to find out the department where this particular employee is so using the index match function so how do you implement this you start with what's equal to index all right so once you hit index you will be asked for the what array so the array in this case is the whole guys under what the department all right so that is where we want to do what find the index from so you hold down control shift and your down arrow key and to select the array for you now after you've done that where you have your row number you start your what your match all right so your match should bring up the lookup value which is this so comma and the lookup array is this okay the column under employee name and the match type is what zero so you close it up one to close off for the match and you close it up again to close off for the index and hit what enter so you can see that what rick read is under the production what department all right so supposing you have a drop down arrow here you can also change the name of the employee and the department to change accordingly. Hope you have gotten value in this video showing you powerful Microsoft Excel features and functions that you can use to speed up workflow. Go ahead to watch the video on your screen now that shows you 15 powerful Excel keyboard shortcut keys that you can use to speed up workflow. Microsoft Excel made easy.